Stargirl is back, baby! There are multiple shows running concurrently. What is it? House of Dragon, Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, She-Hulk, and then we have Stargirl. I'm watching Stargirl right now. I haven't seen any other show. I did watch Sandman about two weeks ago. This is so, so good. And I listened to the audiobook as well, and that, that's even better. And I feel like watching the series before listening to the audiobooks gave me a greater understanding of the events happening. Let's talk about Stargirl. Now, I want to be to do this or try to do this every week because I want to talk about some of, of the series that I, I have been watching and today's gonna be Stargirl at some point I'm gonna watch Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power I think that series looks pretty decent I haven't seen really anything of it but hopefully it, it will be a success now Stargirl season 2 I loved it was called Summer Camp or Summer School yeah Summer School and obviously at the end of season 2 they managed to defeat Eclipso it's been so so long since I watched that and I, I just can't remember exactly what happened but in season 3 we have a new villain of course and just starting off it started or this episode started off with a montage of the JLA and we we saw Rick Tyler trying to bury Grundy to bring him back to life because obviously he died and you know he, he feels guilty and he, he is trying to bury him and you have to bury Grundy in a specific place I believe it's said between two oak trees so yeah he has been doing that and it's not been working and one thing that makes him really happy is that Yolanda the new wildcat she has she has found a community where she feels like she is happy where she belongs I believe it it was the church we obviously saw her going to church in the last season season two and you know I'm, I'm happy for her that she is you know managing to you know, overcome these these horrible things that that happened to her now before we get further I just want to talk about the CW TV app or website for some reason the Stargirl episodes air on CW first I think then they come to HBO Max which I think is a real shame because if you want to be up to date to with these things you have to watch it on the CW TV app and or not the app I keep saying app the website or if you have cable TV I don't live in America so we don't or I don't have access to the CW a cable channel but it's such a horrible experience watching on the CW TV website it really pulls you out of the experience because you get constantly bombarded with ads it's like the first few minutes are fine because you're a long time watching but then after that like five minutes you get an ad and then there's ads every freaking minute it's like you watch watch a scene and then boom you get hit with an ad and it's like the scene is like one minute one one minute 30 seconds then the ads will be three minutes long and it, you you just get so bored and it does not help with immersion at all now hopefully with the CW being sold, no no DC project will ever again be on the CW. Now back to the actual episode, Cindy Berman, as you know, she is a very mean girl and she has seemed to, you know, turned a new leaf, sort of. I mean she's still mean, but she did help an elderly woman with her, you know, groceries. She would never have done that if, if it was season 1. Also very interesting is that Cindy wants to join the JSA. She kinda joined the JSA even though most people didn't want her there. And I guess you know she, she I mean Courtney is trying to give her a chance but the other two members are like nah we don't want you here. I mean for perfectly good reasons. Especially Yolanda. And she was a villain so you know bringing villains on the team mm, maybe not such a good idea. But she is not the only member or villain that is joining the team it seems like it seems like artemis also wants to join the team now she is not an official member now i don't think cindy is an official member yet either but she 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 has been going on missions with the team artemis crox just kind of showed up at the end fighting some baddies while the team were going to you know try to do their crime fighting and they ran into each other the gambler is back now he left town in the previous season, he's a coward, but he's back and he's trying to trace his his daughter Becky and he 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 actually visits the Whitmore household and trying to get the help from Stargirl and Pat and you know it, it, <laughs> they are like hmm do we really want to help you? Not really. I mean, while some of the villains helped, you know, defeat 
Eclipso. He ran away, so he, he is not in their good books. Now meanwhile, the gambler is visiting the Whitmer household. Someone is secretly recording them. The gambler eventually goes back to his trailer and yeah, someone is also recording him there and yeah, um, the life kind of gets snuffed out of him. Yeah, he he, he, he died. He, he is dead, man. I, they brought him back. He's trying to look for his daughter and then they kill him off. Or at least it looks that way. Now, I don't know why they would bring him back just to kill him in the first episode. Who, who is his daughter? Who is his daughter, Becky? Cindy Berman was in the wrong place at the wrong time. She was there when Gambler got killed. The JSA showed up just in time and Cindy Berman was standing over the Gambler's dead body and she didn't do it, we know that. I mean, we didn't, don't know for sure, but come on. There's no way she, she's gonna join the JSA and then kill the Gambler. I mean, I, there was some amb ambigu ambiguity to it, but she doesn't strike me as a woman who uses technology to spy on people. The Shade and the Gambler also interacted and, you know, the Shade despises the Gambler, so he, he could have killed him, but he doesn't strike me as a man who would use technology either, so there's some, some, someone mysterious out there. We have been getting some newspapers that Green Lantern is still out there saving people somewhere, so that is good. She, she exists and, you know, we want a Green Lantern on the JSA, man. I, I guess the team is just getting bigger and bigger. And eventually it's gonna be as big as the old JSA. Starman obviously came back. I have to use the word obviously with many times, but you know, he, he is back, he's been housekeeping while the family has been gone and it is revealed the only only reason he came back is because he wants the staff back. And obviously he said that Courtney could have the staff and you know they made made the deal that while Courtney was in school he could have the staff and I, I actually wish that he would actually let Courtney have the staff but obviously it's, it's, it's hard for him to give up the staff I mean he he is the OG's star spangled kid or star man and you know he had the staff I don't know if he had the did he have the staff first was it created I don't think he created it right maybe he did but if he created it doesn't it belong to him but I can't really remember and the staff is sentient I know that so and it did choose Courtney, so, you know, and it seemed like there's gonna be, there are gonna be co-star persons. Now, I'm not sure how I feel about them both being star persons. Obviously, Courtney is gonna be a star girl. It, it's her show, obviously. She's not gonna lose, lose the staff or anything. But I, I, I know it's hard for them to, you know, give up that, that life because, you know, he, he died and you know the staff had to find someone else but you know he never came to terms with it and it's gonna be interesting to see how they actually deal with it because the cope star persons thing is not gonna work out for too long come on now let's be real now at the end of last season sportsmaster and tigress aka the crux became their neighbors so yeah they are trying to deal with that now the crux man the crux are probably the most funny people on the show like genuinely, I love the Crocs. They they are so so funny. Like Sportsmaster Master and Tigress, they're <laughs> amazing, man. Like that that is what comedy should should be like. It's it's so good. I love them. You know, you may not like them, but I love them. They're so freaking good. Let's talk about Artemis Croc. Artemis kicks bad guy butt in this episode. At the end of the episode, she single-handedly takes out like six or seven baddies effortlessly. And Starman also seems to be getting between Pat and Courtney, which I don't like. They built up this relationship and they have come so far. I don't want to see anything come between them. I, I just love their relationship and it needs to grow, man. It needs to grow. You know, they, are, they have built a real connection from where they came from to where they are now. And I don't want to see Starman come between that and Starman is still living in the past because he still wants Pat to be a psychic and it's like bruh the thing is Starman was a D okay he was a D bag let's just use the word dirtbag instead of the actual D um he, he always treated treated Pat so bad man like when they were in the JSA together he, he wasn't even a psychic he was more of like an assistant or something like that a secretary but not that secretary that actually actually useful. 
just a secretary that gets treated like shit. Now he has a giant robot that he has built, so I'm not sure how I feel about Starman. It's like, yeah, he is nice enough, but he kind of treated the Pat with absolutely no no respect whatsoever. And I don't think that Pat ever like realized that. He was just happy being around the superhero. Well, that those are basically all the notes that I have. Now I promise that in episode two when that comes out. I'm gonna do better with my notes, I feel like I just summarized the entire thing. But yeah, that was my, you know, discussion or thoughts, whatever. No, that wasn't, I haven't rated the episode yet. I'm just gonna say that I really, really heavily recommend Stargirl and I enjoyed this episode now. This is obviously the introduction to the new season, so it's nothing too crazy yet. So I will give this a good episode. Not really fantastic or amazing, just a good episode, good solid episode, a good start to the series or the new season and yeah that is it, that has been my thoughts, discussion, review, whatever about Stargirl season 3, Frenemies, episode 1 called, I'm not sure I'm allowed to say this but, so yeah, I hope you heard that and I will see you later, goodbye.